Well, hello loves, happy Monday. All this week we are going to have fun, five days of fun. And um, I'm super excited <clears throat> about the projects that we're going to be doing. They're so cute. And then today, today's kind of, I'm gonna introduce you to the stencils. We're gonna talk about some um, stenciling do's and don'ts, some uh, fading out of stenciling and why, using tissue paper with stenciling, uh, texture paste on tissue paper with the stencils. We're going to be talking about embellishing our birds and different things like that. We're going to talk about some background papers. All of this is in preparation for the next four projects. So today we're going to do prep. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday are all the most adorable projects. I'm going to show you those in just a second. Um, so, um, let me just show you the new stencils first, and then I'll show you the projects, and then we'll dive in to the techniques and stuff. So, I've got a whole new line of 5 by 8 stencils, and um, they're fantastic. And why I haven't done this before, I'm not exactly sure. And what I've done is I've done some really simple background ones that I don't have. And I, with all the stencils that I have, it's crazy. But anyway, so, um, I have... I always test my designs out on tissue paper because then I can use them on any project. So um, this is the butterflies, simple butterflies, and I always do the actual stencil and then I, I print, I take it and I print it. So I, I typically use my, um, my tub roller and I'm going to show you this in just a second and I will roll it out to see the design and then I will print stamp it on the reverse. So uh, butterflies, birds, all oh, these are, I am so happy with how these turned out. So I've got three different birds, kind of a side view, a, like a, almost like a chickadee little, f f little fat one, and then a flying bird. But look at how, look at the, these are the, that's a stamped one, that's stamped, that's stenciled, that's stenciled. But here they are, I did them in raw umber because we're gonna do some embellishing today for our projects as well. So look at how awesome. And I love them just as they are. They're very rustic just the way they are. And I ended up doing that with a couple of my projects. So, and then Sunday inspiration, this coming, you know, after the week, Sunday is also going to be um, some stencil projects like this. Okay, so that's the birds. So I'm really pleased. So you get two sizes with the birds. Then we go into just some really basic background um, like uh, graphics and they're awesome. So this is stenciled and stamped and these are all called simple backgrounds. So simple backgrounds one through eight. So that's kind of like a, a rainbow or a swoosh. This is random circle ones. So stenciled and stamped lines this one's all of these all of them the lines one I absolutely love I've used them over and over and over already this is like a half circle so fun and I did them in black I like to do them in black and white because they're so fun on tissue paper because the tissue paper if you use fluid matte medium just completely disappears so this is like a flower or almost like a clover but it's a really great pattern, stamped and stenciled. So I'm so excited about these. This one, I love the stamped, um, I love them both. And this is kind of a white or a gray one. These are all part of the simple backgrounds, circles. Why did I not have a circle stencil like this? I don't know. So I did white and black, but both stamped and and then a large circle one. I have used this one over and over. This will be a, like a go-to, I think. But look at, ah, oh, so good. Okay, and then I did some flowers. They're called Mayflowers. But look at, I was doing some sampling and I use, I use this one in a project and I'll show you that in a second. But um, Mayflowers one, two, and three. I think that's what it is. Okay, yeah, so that's that one and then look at that like in black and then 
um, going over it and embellishing. That's what I did on this one. Or actually I did it all in green and then I came back over and embellished. We're going to do some embellishing today. But this one, I love them all. Love them all. Did some without stamping. This one's a really fun one. I love the, the feel of it. And so again, I stamped it all in green and then came back and embellished it. Look at that. Oh, I love it. I, I didn't do these in raw umber, and now I wish I had, but... Okay. And then I've got two... This is background words. And it's love, joy, hope, courage, play, soft, beauty, strength, peace, learn, breathe, moments, begin, grace, light, present, loved, belong, overcome. Woo, is that good? And then this one's um, background script. And this is... Um, Art is the expression of the soul. It heals and calms. Inspiration exists, um, but it has to find you working. Um, I can't read it. Let's see. Don't let fear keep you from creating. Try again to show up. Make a mess and repeat. Keep daily practicing. Yes, please. If that's what it looks like. All stenciled out. Paris flourish. I needed like a, a kind of a fleur. Oh, look at that. This is just hello. This is mosaic tile, and I love the. This is a stenciled. I love the stamped image as well. They're so good. Um, boulders. This one was because I have this one. I have some of these in bigger sizes, but it's nice to have them in the smaller size. But look at it stamped out. Yeah. And then I did a bunch of the carved up ones. Um, for in a smaller size. These are great for borders, for journaling, different things like that. Carved up pods. Look at that. And the nice thing is with tissue paper, you can choose exactly what you want to use. So you can create almost a new design. And this is carved up links, great borders, different things like that for journal art journaling. Carved Pods. This is another favorite of mine because it's just like the perfect amount of embellishment on a project. So those are the 5x8 stencils that are out now and available for you. So this I believe is the first one that we do. Breathe. And there's that flower. That's the flower I did on a piece of paper and I sampled it out to see what it looked like. Look at how gorgeous that looks. Ugh. And then I used a whole <clears throat> bunch of stencils in the background. So much fun. Then the second project we did was this one. Look at that fabulousness. Dots, lines, all different kinds of stuff. But this has got scotch tape in the background for texture. These are all 30 minute projects. They did not take me long. I wanted them to be super fast. So that's the second project. So this one, this one will be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Look at this cute little chickadee. Oh, is that not a fun burst of color? We're going to make some papers today in preparation if you want to do these projects along with me. And this is a, my embellished little bird. And, oh, this is the flower stencil. I used just the buds uh, on one of the flower stencils. So, yes. And then the third, the fourth project is this one. And this one, look, I love this one. This is textured. And we're going to do some texture paste on tissue paper. And I'm going to talk about why I do that. So, those are the delicious projects. So, this will be Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday's projects. Or no, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday projects. And then I'll have a new one on Sunday for Sunday Inspiration. I want to do this fast so it doesn't take up too much time. So I've got my stuff um, out here. Okay, stenciling. Okay, so basically, um, a lot of times I get a question asked about how come I can't get a clean image for stenciling? Um... And that ha a lot of that has to do with the surface that you're creating on or, okay, so I've got a couple stencils out here. I've got a sponge 
You can use a stenciling applicator, whatever it might be for you. I'm going to use, I'm using black gesso and part of the reason I like using black gesso when I stencil is because it's a tiny bit thicker. So if you're, if your images are not clean stenciling, and a lot of times I don't want it to be clean, but there are times, especially for words, where you want it to be fairly clean and neat and tidy. Um, the thicker your paint, the more it will stay in place. So if you're using like a fluid acrylic or something like that, it might tend to seep out. The other thing to think about is the surface. So this is a completely flat surface. This has been gessoed, um, but a nice flat surface always helps. Most of my projects are not nice and flat. I have lots of texture. So if there's any texture underneath, if some area is raised or not, um, it's going to leave a gap where your, your, um, where your paint can seep through. Now, I'm going to scooch this over. I've got my black gesso out here. I've got my sponge. Now, if I load this up really heavily, it's really loaded up, and I come in here and I pounce really hard, I'm a, you're, it's not even recognizable. So typically what I do is I load up and I pounce off. Sometimes I even pounce off right onto my stencil. And then I come over here and let's just pounce, let's just go really hard on this one. I still get some seepage, but not as much. So the key is load it up, pounce it off, soft taps. It's gonna take a tiny bit longer, but do it over and over and over until all of your area is covered. And so I'll turn my sponge to kind of get in the spots. And I've got a nice clean image now. So paint makes a difference, surface makes a difference, pressure makes a difference, and the amount of paint that you have on your applicator. So I won't reload. I'll just come back over here, pounce this out. Okay, and a lot of times when I'm wanting to do a full, a full stencil in black and white, now I typically don't do this on my projects, I will do this on paper, I use my roller, and these are at Home Depot for like $2.50, the case, the roller, everything. But you can see even here, I'm, t I'm pu pushing out a lot of that paint so that, that you know, and then I'll kind of go back over this couple of times. You won't get as clean an image this way than if you pounce it out. But even still, this is black gesso in my case, so it's a little bit thicker. I'm not putting any pressure on here. I'm just rolling over it over and over. And you can see that there's some bleed through here. But um, I don't mind that, especially if it's a background. Um, I, most of the time I will just stencil directly, especially for words and stuff like that. But then with the roll, with the roller, I can come in here now. I'm going to grab a piece of tissue paper. Press this out. <clears throat> Sometimes you just never know, like that outline there is pretty awesome. And then I've got the reverse of that for, for, for like background. So all those things make a difference when you're stenciling. Now for, and, and it also makes a difference too. So this has got gesso on it, so it's not porous. If this was just a regular piece of paper, the paint's gonna soak in faster and has a less chance of smearing. Um, and so I wanna show you. So here is, let me grab a piece of parchment paper and put this down. This is just a regular piece of tissue paper. I'm working on the non-shiny -si side, non-shiny. I'm going to make sure I don't have any. I'm going to put this down and I'm going to do that same thing. This is a porous surface. It, it's going to soak up that paint nicely. I'm going to come back over it. 
just like I did. Not putting much pressure on it. And look at how nice and clean that is. That's one of the reasons why I like to create on tissue paper. So let me, I'm gonna set this over here and I'm going to print this on here. And it just soaks up the paint so nothing is smearing. I've got a nice clean image. Um, for the reverse, and then I know it's reversed, but I can turn this over now and put it down on my project and the words are correct. And it still goes transparent. So that's one of the reasons why I like creating on tissue paper, um, because the stenciling really comes out very clean because that's an absorbent um, surface. Now, th the same will work true if you just get a regular piece of copy paper, this regular copy paper, it's not gessoed. Let's do that again. Again, because it's not gessoed, the paint's going to soak right into that paper, not smush around too much. So those are the things that you'll want to think about as you, like, what, are you, what surface are you trying to stencil on? If it's super slick, it's one of the reasons why I like using matte medium and my matte paints, because it gives it a ground so that paint doesn't go sliding around. Nice, clean image. Okay. So think about your surface, think about the type of paint, think about um, all of those things for your stenciling pressure, um, how much paint you have on your applicator. All of it makes a difference. And then porous or non-porous surface. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my journal here. So I have a list of things up here that I want to talk to you about, about stenciling. That's going to kind of play into um, how we create. This is gessoed, okay. So this is gessoed and it's ready to go for a project. Let me scooch this over. Much like what we will be stenciling on once we kind of get to our final layers or beginning layers or whatever. So this has got gesso on it. And let's, I'm going to grab this. And I'm just going to put out some, let's go raw umber. And I'm just going to use my applicator that I had. So it'll be a little black. So raw umber, this raw umber is a heavy body paint. So I can kind of load this up and not have to worry about it slipping around. So I'm just going to stencil this out. And one of the things that I, how I like to use this technique for stenciling is so I've just stenciled out my image and I want you to notice that it wasn't perfectly straight and all that kind of stuff. That's that's important a lot of times when we're creating a background, but I like to smooth out the edges. Smooth it out so it's faded out so it doesn't look so perfect. Or I will come and just squalt right after I have stenciled it so the paint still hasn't set yet and kind of <clears throat> pick it up so that it looks faded. To me, I love that. So it looks weathered and aged. So that's one of the techniques that I use in, in a couple of our projects. Look at that. Isn't that great? Oh, love it, love it, love it. Um, <clears throat> plus it'll help this blend into our projects, whether it be in the background or the foreground. And um, it will kind of integrate this stenciling into the project. So it doesn't look like it's just this, boom, I just decided to stencil something right here. Okay, now, and that's, that technique works on, that only works on, on a non-porous surface. 
because otherwise, just like we just did with the stenciling on a, a porous surface on just regular paper, that, that paint soaks in, it won't, it won't move like this on regular paper. It has to be gessoed or has to have matte medium on it or something like that. So keep that in mind. Um, so we've got these, we've got our, um, I'm gonna grab another piece of tissue paper here. And I'm just gonna roll this out real quick. It's one of my, they're all my favorites. I say, oh, this one's my favorites. They're all my favorites. <laughs> So I'm just going to roll this out, and I think I did it on the shiny side, which is okay. Shiny side has a little bit slicker surface, so sometimes the image isn't, that looks pretty good. Then I'll stamp it. I kind of like the pickup image too, a lot of the time it's like this subtle image. Look at that. That's like, you know, you take that and put that down somewhere on, like on, like in the foreground because it's so subtle. Okay. So I've just stamped, stenciled out my, my um, stencil on tissue paper. And this is one of the reasons I love doing this this way. <clears throat> so this one's dry. So let's move this aside. So now... Let me grab my project here. Let's see which one it is. Because I, I want to show you why I'm showing you this. Um, and I create this way all the time. It's not just these projects. This is a perfect example. So in this one, um, see this? This is that, this is that um, exact design. And now I've worked my way through all of my layers and I'm at the top of my, I'm in the foreground now. I'm not in the background, I'm in the foreground. And I'm doing my finishing touches and I need this little bit of black. But I'm not sure how much or, you know, if it will work. And this is the best way to put something down and if you don't like it, you just take it off. You haven't put any paint down, you're not messing anything up. And you can take this just this like see how I've just got this little tiny bit I can I can shape it to exactly how I want the shape to be so maybe I want just this another little bit of that I love that it gives it, it there's no fear there's no pressure and that's put that up there that's what this one is too this one is the carved pod one you can see just the bit that I took off for, for right here. So we can pick and choose exactly, or it's this one, see, you can see, I think that's that one, something like that. Yeah, that's it. Um, so I get to pick and choose exactly which parts I want, and that's hard to do sometimes when you're actually stenciling right on the project. So um, I love doing my stencils this way. I have them in a stash and I can bring them out and you don't have to do them black and white. Typically I do them black and white because I'm looking for that little bit of contrast, that little bit of something to kind of, you know, move the eye around your project and have it be interesting. And black and white contrast is really valuable in your foreground, in your background too but in your foreground because it keeps you moving. So I've got black here, I've got black here, I've got black here, and I keep you moving around this piece so it's interesting and it feels balanced. And so I typically do it in black and white, but you don't have to. You could do this in any color you want, and then you have a whole stash of these ready to go. And this, and this is a really fun way when you're like, I don't know what to do. I, you know, I don't have any ideas. Get in here, get some tissue paper. And this is just tissue paper, like Hallmark tissue paper. Um, I actually get a, a lot of my tissue paper from the dollar store. It's for, for packaging and for presents and different things like that. Um, so it's not expensive. It's super, you know, super cheap, but it's a great way to do something. And then I guarantee you, as soon as you're doing something like this, you get, you start getting ideas and excited about the pattern and the shape and all of that. So that's the main reason I use tissue paper. 
I love having this stash on hand in whatever color you want. Typically for me, it's black and white. Um, so that's why I use tissue paper so often. Okay, let me look at my list here. Okay. The other thing that you can do, which is super fun, I should just leave this out, is let me scooch this over here. Let me grab my parchment paper. So here's this cutie patootie, right? And here's my tissue paper. Put that shiny side down. I love to stencil texture paste onto my tissue paper. And I'm gonna tell you why in just a second. So this is Nova Colors texture paste. It's my favorite. But there's all different kinds of texture paste out there. So I've got some texture paste on my, I'm gonna kind of tap that out because I don't want to overwhelm it. You have to be a little gentle when you're working on tissue paper. But let's just smush that down. I don't want to put pressure, too much pressure, because then, again, it will start to ooze out underneath. And when you're using texture paste or anything like that, I try to go in, you know, I don't want to push up against the sides too much because that's when it starts to ooze out. It's, it's difficult, and some, you know, you just get what you get. And that's one of the nice things about doing it on tissue paper is that if it if you don't get a great you know texture paste image you, it's just tissue paper it's not on your project and then i've got this left over nothing goes to waste so you always got to you always got to do the stamp off because you just never know what you get look at that okay so then I let it dry and it's gonna crinkle up a little bit as it dries. And you're gonna see in one of our projects, this is texture paste, a texture paste bird that I did just like that. And <clears throat> I put it down with, you know, with my fluid matte medium, just like I would with any tissue paper, anything. But the reason that I do this is because, um, there was so much there's so a lot of times like I said when you're talking about getting clean images and different things like that on your projects the surface if it's really textural so when you have a lot of texture on your background you of course don't get a clean image and so doing it on tissue paper and then putting it down will allow you to put that down a nice clean image and still get the same effect that's one of the other reasons why I like um, stenciling on tissue paper is again if you have a really rough surface and you want a specific let's just say you want a specific word and you're like oh there's so much texture on there you can use tissue paper you put it down with fluid matte medium and it just blends right in and so there's all, all of my projects have tissue paper in it so that's texture paste on tissue paper. Now you could use like super heavy gesso or anything like that. Any, you know, thing that's nice and thick. And then I, you know, I came back over it with just a acrylic ink and let that ink sit in all the grooves. And it's so gorgeous. So that is texture on tissue paper. Let's go to our birds and talk about embellishing our birds. Now, in and this could be birds or butterflies. So for instance, on this one, I did the butterfly just as it was. No embellishment whatsoever. And I also um, kind of, as we talked about earlier, with the stenciling and kind of watering it out a little bit, um, you can do that like this too. And that doesn't have to be just on your pattern, but you can do your images that way too. Kind of water it out. Now, um, you can do your stencil image for your birds or whatever, just like this. It's got a real rustic feel, but maybe you want to embellish it just a little bit. And maybe you, and the, the great thing is, is that you can stencil it out just like this. I stenciled this one out um, black. These are brown, whatever you choose. And then go over it with your paints. 
and create a fun bird or a rustic bird or this one's more realistic whatever you want to do but um, I want to show you just real quick this doesn't take a lot of time or work so I grab just a small round brush is this the other one where's the other one at it's a bigger one I get a couple of different sizes just depends on you know how big you're working and um, <clears throat> you can decide how you want your embellishment to go um, a lot of the vein the veins of the bird get kind of covered up because well you know you're making it more realistic and or you're making it more fun you get to choose what you want but it helps you see kind of the direction like these are the wings that kind of thing and the direction of your embellishment so I'm gonna put out of what I'm talking about here so I've got some blue let's put some raw umber out there and some white gesso so black and white gesso are my blacks and whites because it gives me a ground It makes things matte. So I'm just going to choose this guy here and I'm going to make his wings blue and I'm, I'm going in the direction of the wing. I'm not like going like this, but I'm going in the direction of the wing so that our brush strokes look somewhat natural. I'm going to add a, a value change in that blue with a little bit of gesso. And you can choose to get as detailed as you want. I, I don't like to get too detailed because they're, they are what they are. So I'm just going to kind of, I'll let some of those edges just be raw like that. And I like to leave that kind of brown edge around or black edge or whatever edge you're, you know, choosing to use. because it gives it a good frame and most of the time I'm shading anyway. You see that pretty wing though? And then I just want to, I want, you know, darks and lights and value changes and you can look at your birds to see, you know, if there's a particular um, color or something that you want. And you can see, oops, I went over my edge there. So I'm going to leave this one, the, the middle part kind of dark. In fact, I may come back in and just add some brown. But the embellishment doesn't take a, a lot. And you can see how my, see how my brush strokes are kind of rough? That kind of indicates the feather kind of feel. And then maybe I'll make my tail, I'll come back into my blue here. And I'm allowing the, that brown to kind of show through because that, that's like a, a good layer of detail. And then I can come back in with a little bit of my white because I want some value change and that's going to help those tail feathers show up. And then maybe just a little bit more white. And that's it. And you see how quickly that detail kind of comes out and you and of course you can do it any way you want so i would i would like for this wing here let me put a little bit more blue and this is prussian blue and i'm use i use acrylic wash for the most part in my projects with the exception of some Payne's gray and so here's you can see the direction of how things are going on this wing by the direction of the lines And I'm, I'm following that to go along with the stencil itself. And you can see I'm leaving some of that white space and I'm not being real particular about it, but you can see how fantastic it looks. And then I'll come back in, make my value change, following that same pattern. And then a little bit more white. And there you have it. 
And then of course you can go into more detail. You can black out the beak, you can create the eye. You can see how in this one I um, darkened around the eye. I like to always give a little bit of light bubble in the eye. So like this one doesn't have it. Oh, yeah, I knew I was going to do that. You know, add a little bit of a dot in the eye to give it some life. Let me grab, I'll grab a little bit of, so I can come in here. I'll make his face a little bit darker, or her face. And then some black gesso. I will put some the eye in. I'll darken in the beak, kind of connect the parts. Maybe put a little bit of that black up here and kind of pulling it over the edge of that blue. And then I'm going to add a little bit of jet white gesso to my raw umber just to kind of give that face a little bit of light and then a light bubble in the eye. Maybe I'll come up like this. That was really big, but you can see, you get the idea. I love I love how the um, the detail of the brush works. And then, if you really want to go into detail, you can come back in with pencils or markers or whatever you decide. So I could come back in and kind of bring some more detail into my bird with my markers. And, or I could do that with my pencils. So I could kind of come back in now with my pencils and just add a light layer. And I'm going to, the eye's bugging me, so I gotta fix it. I'm gonna kinda and then I'll, once that dries, then I'll go around it with some black marker. I don't want to stick my black marker in there because it'll ruin it. I so want to though. But again, you can go into as much detail as you want. Um, let me grab, I'm looking for a nice blue. Okay, so like here, that's not blue. I can even come up and add additional marks on his head or her head so that it looks like feathers. However you want to do it, however detailed you want to get. And I've chosen brown because I've got that brown under layer. And I'm not going to do any shading or anything like that on this paper because I will cut this out and put it down on a project. But so much, so much that you can do with your birds. And so, like some I will use just like this. Some I will embellish. You know, some I will make fun. And this, this one here, I just kind of followed the sections and kind of went along with the, all the colors that were in the project. And of course added dots and different things like that. And dots are always, let me grab my Sharpies, are always the best. So, you know, you could add even more detail on your bird. So, there you go. There's your bird embellishment lesson, quick lesson. And our butterflies can be done exactly the same way. I left mine raw, but you can go into all kinds of detail with your butterflies. And um, yeah, I have so many ideas for that. Okay, what's next on my list? Um, background papers. Okay, let me put this down. 
Now, as you can see in this one, see all these papers? These are all papers made from the stencils. And I use them a lot in the projects. Okay, I've got my sheet of pa paint out here. And all I've done is I've just taken a piece of copy paper. Let me just grab one, just show you real quick. Piece of copy paper, not primed or anything. It's just raw paper. And I've just done a square. I'm not being particular about it. You could do a whole page, but most of the time, all we need are these little bits of paper. So I just do a square. So that's what I've done here. Just a bunch of squares, randomly chose colors that make me happy. Maybe you choose colors that you, you know, for the project that you're working, whatever you want to do. Then all I do is I grab my stack of stencils and I start, um, Let's just, let me grab my sponges here. And I wanna look at a contrasting color. So I know orange looks great on purple. I know the green looks great. Let's just go for orange. So I'm just gonna tap this out. I didn't offload like I should have, like I just told you to do. Sometimes that's all you need, but it looks a little light. So I'm gonna pounce back over that. Nice and light pressure. Perfect. Nice contrast. That's what I'm looking for. So then I'll grab another design and maybe I'll do yellow on this. That would be kind of cool to see the yellow on the magenta. I'm just looking for bright pops. <clears throat> and of course you can do any color you want. This is, I'm kind of prepping you for some of the things that we're, I am prepping you for what we're going to be doing this week. So I did lots of bright pops of color in one of our projects. Ah, oh, so good. What would be good on this one? Mm, maybe some teal? Even black. Uh, let's see. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Yeah, that's a great contrast right there. And all we need are these little bits. And so you can do whatever size you want. So this, let's see, let's go, let's go magenta. And you can always, always do, you know, blacks and whites. Ooh, fun, fun, fun. And then what should I do on this one? Perfect. So I create a several, several different pages of these papers. And you can see we used how much we use them. That's all that's left of that one. Um, so that is a great way, one, to stencil, to try new designs, to try color combinations, and then you'll have these little bits of color pops that you can put in your backgrounds. Okay, one last thing. I wanna just talk about our flowers because um, we do use the flower in one of the projects. So this is this, the flower that we use. This is, I just stenciled this out. This is on an old book page. I put a little bit of gesso down in the background to kind of mute the background and to give it some stability since this is a vintage book page. I stenciled this out with green. You can do it brown, you can do it whatever, but because I'm gonna leave the leaves green, it made sense to stencil it out that way. And then I've got my little brushes here and I'm going to down here, and this is olive green, down here I'm just going to fill in the gaps. I just want to fill in the gaps. And I'm, and I'm, not, I'm not being too particular about it because sometimes the beauty in it is that the feeling that it's handmade, like it's you know, the perfection part, we can really get lost in that and we lose the beauty of just the, the brush strokes, all those kinds of things. And then I've got some gesso out here and I, I'm gonna put some gesso down here on my flowers. I'm trying to remember what I did. Oh, I forgot to connect that one. And I'm just coming back over real quick. These are, this is not, 
anything hard. And that's what I love. That's why I love using stencils for one is because it makes the process go so fast. I don't have to reinvent the wheel. I've got the pattern right here. All I have to do now is add some fun embellishments to it. And I've got, you know, something, um, is that a flower? That's a flower here too. And the other thing I like about having like the under layer of the stencil, like the green, is it gives it this weight. It gives it some depth. Okay, there's my, now I'm just going to come right in with the white on my brush. Grab a little bit of that. And I'm going to go right back into it. I'll come back into my gesso now. Kind of wipe some of that off. With just um, almost pure white, a little bit of pink in there, and do that again. And my brush strokes get a little bit smaller. And you, you know, if you want to add a different color, you can do that too. Let's add some yellow. I'm going to mix some of that yellow right into the paint that I have on my brush, maybe a little bit of magenta. Just add another layer of color. These are little small tweaks that we're making to our project. Okay, I'm going to come back into my green over here because there's a couple of spots that didn't get connected that I forgot. Okay, uh, let's see. This leaf goes like this and this goes like this. And then, you know, we can continue to kind of add and highlight and different things like that. I'm going to come back into my olive green over here and add a little bit of white to it. And then I can kind of come in and do some highlights. Ooh, I didn't attach that leaf either. Come in and add some highlights to it. I'll even grab some of this um, green gold. Yeah. That's what I want. I want there to be that contrast. That pop of difference in what I'm doing. I can even add some of that on my stems if I want. I can come up here and add a little bit of that kind of greenery underneath the flower if I want. We can kind of embellish this however, however you want. And again, you can go into as much detail as you want. Then what I would do is I would grab my pencil and I would add some, maybe some darker lines. Around the base. And I wouldn't, I will shade a little bit. But most of the time, I'll wait to do my shading until after I put my project down on my piece. Same with my pencil marks. I would wait to do that until after I get it down. Because one, it's not permanent. And um, you're putting this down with matte medium. And then I would come back in and I would really do, you know, all of my embellishments with like some shading. Some more shading and different things like that. And really make this feel rich and and not stenciled. That's what that's what I love. So you can see how it's you know it's getting weight to it now that I'm shading. And I'm just using this is a soft pastel pencil. I can use my charcoal pencil too. But let me show you that project. So here's my flower. And you can see what I've done to it. I didn't do a ton of embellishments. You know, I added some... Oh, let me scooch that over. Sorry. I didn't do a ton of embellishments to it. It's pretty, pretty raw. Um, I filled in my lines and added some, 
some shading and some marks and that kind of thing and then added some ink over the top of it but I love how it looks I love the the look of it and you can see how small my flowers feel here I really took some freedom with my brush strokes on my flowers to kind of beef them up you have all that kind of freedom and yet you still have the template of what you want to create so lots of freedom in creating our flowers this way and I could just I could go to town doing this okay that's the flowers let's just quickly quickly go over supplies and I'm just gonna just go to town I'm not gonna have a list of everything um, it, below each video so um, this is uh, acrylic ink and sepia or you could use raw umber acrylic ink soft pastel pencils charcoal pencil stabilo all pencil i use stabilo all for for my branch stabilo all pencil sharpie markers for fun dots and different things like that i use acrylic paints choose your paint this isn't about the type of paint that i'm using i like acrylic gouache because it's matte and it's pretty opaque um, but choose the colors that work for you. Craft paint, heavy body paint, fluid acrylic. Keep in mind that when you're stenciling though, the body of the paint matters or just go nice and light. So I use prism violet, some fluorescent, some teal, some cad orange, quinacridone magenta, burnt sienna, yellow, Prussian blue. Um, I use my Nova Colors Payne's Gray. I love this paint. I love this color. Um, <clears throat> I use some unbleached titanium. Again, all different types of paints I'm using. It doesn't matter. Use what you love. I'm using black and white Liquitex um, gesso for my blacks and whites. I'm using Nova Colors texture paste. This is my acrylic um, uh, Amsterdam paint. It's my green gold. I use my roller tubs from Home Depot. We use some masking tape for a couple of our, pro one of our projects for texture in the background and all of the stencils and all of the papers that we have created. And the supplies are really, really simple. I use this pretty much the same things over and over again. Oh, I do use raw umber, of course. This is Grumbacher's raw umber. I have Golden's raw umber. Use what you have. Um, I think that's it. Soft pastel pencils, Sharpie markers, Posca pens, pencils, okay, and all the stencils. All right, my loves, um, I can't wait to start creating with you. That will happen tomorrow. You can get everything prepped and ready if you want to create along with me. And let's have some fun this week.